Praise God. Somebody say liberty. Comes. When he's Lord. Thank you Holy Ghost. If you guessed it. You guessed it right. I'm here to start a right, righteous right. Praise God. I hate the devil. He's a liar. Jesus ain't coming back to this world for a girlfriend. Amen. He ain't coming back, Pastor Ruby, for a Sunday morning date. Come on. Right. Come on. Dude, never said Jesus don't go on dates. Jesus you either walk the aisle of your life and say, I do, for better or worse, sickness and health. <laughs> Death brings me face to face. Well, you don't. Come on, reach up. He said he washes and cleanses his church by the washing of the word, by the word, Ephesians 5, 26. I'm closing. I'm at the end right here. If you ain't heard what it is I've said, you can get the video or you can get the audio. But when he returns, he will not come back for a girlfriend. Amen. Acts 20 and 28 said he has purchased the church of God, but that's not a denomination. He has purchased the church of God with his own blood. Somebody say his own blood. Revelation 1 5 said he has washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse 6 and he's made us kings and priests unto God. First John 1 7 said the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. Ephesians 2 13 said, Ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Colossians 1 20 said, And having made peace through the blood of his cross. He'd be baptized in water in every creek, in every water hole, in every pond, in every river, come on, in every lake. Amen. In the beach shoreline, if you want to. Glory to God, but if you ain't been washed in the blood, you're still lost. It don't matter how many how many preacher's hands you've shook, how many aisles you've walked down, come on somebody, how many churches you've joined, you ain't a part of the church until you've been washed in the blood, it took his blood to make his bride, God took a rib from the first man, Adam's side, and he made Eve, come on somebody, likewise, the last Adam, the first Corinthians 15 calls Jesus from his side again, Acts 20 and 28, blood and water flowed, That's what birthed the church. And he calls her his bride. Revelation 22, 17, the last scripture in the Bible that makes mention in reference to the Holy Ghost using people is this. The spirit and the bride said come. He didn't say the spirit and the religious organized church. The bride. The one that don't have religion, Sunday morning religion, but it's got a relationship with him. They've surrendered their life to him. Luke 9, 23 said, if any man come after me, let him deny himself. Come on, somebody. I know I'm going to do it again. Deny himself and take up his cross. We will sit on this side for And follow me. Somebody shout until you lay your life down. Like as he laid his life down, you're not following him. Jesus said, if you come after me, he must lead you. He must die to you. You must lead yourself. God said his word in Matthew 16 and verse 25. This is the gospel. He that loves his life will lose it. But he that loses his life. I'll find it. That's room. We ain't got nobody that wants to lose their life no more. That's why I'm preaching about the Lord Jesus. If you confess with your mouth the Lord, when you hear Lord, don't you think of the cross? Lord Jesus. 
believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Romans 10 9. Not if you'll confess Jesus. Demons do better than prove better. Lord Jesus. And I I lay my life there. I surrender. I give you everything. I'm not like the soldiers that sit beneath your cross while you were shedding your blood hanging on it. Fulfilling Psalms 22 and 18 that David saw through the telescope of time and prophesied hundreds of years before it happened. Fulfilled in Luke 23 34 as they cast their lots on your garments, gambling with your blood, gambling. Playing games, so I say game over at the foot of his cross. Come on, you've either surrendered to him as Lord, amen, of this cross and took it up, amen, and denied yourself, or you're playing games at the foot of it. Well, Brother Marvin, serving God is hard. No, serving God half heartedly is hard. Trying to serve a God you ain't surrendered to is hard. Come on, somebody. Say, 
This is the love of God. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believed in Him shall not perish, have everlasting life. You see, I skipped over that, that hell of John 3, 16. Did y'all hear that? Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Pastor Ruby, John 3, 16, they spend time on for God so loved the world, and they should. They spend time, come on somebody, believing on Him, and they should. They spend a lot of time on talking about He'll give you every last life. But they hardly ever spend any part of John 3, 16 on time preaching. You should not perish. John 3, 16 talks about hell before it does heaven. Somebody shout it. There's hell in John 3, 16. Preacher! There's a hell of a message in John 3 16. See, some of you too religious, you can't even say that because you think hell is a word. You've been so deceived by your culture, that's all it is. But Luke 16 28, Jesus called it a place. I'm talking about a place, ain't bitch? I ain't talking about just a word. Amen. Boy, I'm having me a ball. Why, well, boy, can't jump? He's been to dunk this one so hard. I say, I'm having me a ball. Praise God. This is mm. surrender. Jesus has got a yoke tonight. It's his cross. He said, it's easy here. Follow me is easy right here. When you do like I did at this cross and you lay everything down. Mm. Resurrection power comes when you say, not my will, but your will. You go ahead and lay everything down. I was in a revival not long ago in southwest Georgia, and I was preaching like this. And there were probably 200 and something people in that church. Young people went to come from everywhere. I had a trash can up there. People was throwing stuff in the trash. So I told them the Holy Ghost said the trash things, and it's time for it to get to camp. Pastor Rubio, about a 17 year old boy, walked up there with tears running down his face like a baby, trembling on the power of God, and throws an iPhone in the trash can. He's out there preached on pornography that night. He was throwing cigarette bags. I saw that happen a few Sundays ago when I was preaching on Sunday mornings. And I didn't even preach on that. All did just preach the cross. Surrender. Friend, there ain't no blue light specials. There ain't no markdowns to freedom in Jesus. Surrender is the only way to it. When you make up your mind, I'm giving him everything. I remember the moment I was 18 years old. I gave him everything. I was a long haired dude. My pants were so tight it'd take the jaws of life to get them off. <laughs> that was before skinny jeans, and I ain't got nothing wrong with skinny jeans as long as you're skinny, but most folk wear them ain't skinny. <laughs> but that was before then. I'd buy them and take them to the seniors and let them cut the sides and make them tight. I'd wear my black boots and with the conchos around my hair hanging about right here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Look looked like a toothpick with hair. <laughs> You carry every rib on my side. I had a six pack back then. Now I'm having to suck in because I'm going back because I got a cave. There's too much of that sanctified fried chicken. But I've been working on it. One of those been getting on to me about even some of that. But I played my drums for a living. If I name some of the names of the groups <laughs> and uh, country stars that I met playing my drums, you'd know who they are. I played on the same stage. A few times. 
Pastor Ruby, I've seen bigger crowds then. I still ain't seen the crowds to the number as I've seen them in the world, but I will because I dreamed about it. God showed me a sea of people. Every time that camera's on, there is a sea of people. But listen to this. One night, I went with my mama to the church. My small, petite, framed little mama. She hadn't even been filled with the Holy Ghost yet. She was in love with Jesus. She was in that Methodist church and it was so dead, but she wanted Jesus. And she knew how to pray. She'd pray for me every night. Sometimes I'd come in half drunk. Come on, somebody stagger. I could hear her praying. Get scared. Mom was a beautician even before I was born. She just retired a few years ago. She'd leave the house, go to the store next door. And if I couldn't find her, I didn't know she'd left. I thought her rapture took place. Scared to death. <laughs> I walk out the door with my long hair. It took me an hour and a half to fix it. I had so much. I'm serious. I had. I mean, I had thick, and long hair. And I'd sling it. I'd sling it and hit the drums. I'm serious. It literally hit the ceiling. Y'all here comes Mr. Hair. I mean, you saw more hair than you did anything. I mean, that was big. There was three of us, all teenagers. We looked like Leonard Skinner, and our front guy that sang sounded like Randy Travis or George Jones, and he was black. He wore a cowboy hat and cowboy boots. Hello? We wore sunshades and bandanas and all hair everywhere. Man, we was a misfit looking bunch of death. But we was good. Hello? And so we was being looked at. I remember playing and afterwards hearing about record companies that was behind the stage listening to watch. Found out our manager could have signed a contract with one one night, but didn't. That's God. Hmm. My mom would pray and I go walking out that door. Well, Steve, and she'd say stuff like, hey, son, something bad happens tonight, you know you're dying, don't call on mama, call on Jesus. <laughs> Say stuff like that. Mess me up all night. Only thing I can do good all night long is play the drums. Floozies want me to go with them somewhere, but I was too scared to death. I was afraid Jesus was about to come. And I was a virgin when I married at 23. Come on, somebody calls that. Everybody else was sleeping with everything, but I was scared to death. I was going to get something. Something bad going to happen to me. I got drunk one time and got so scared I was about to die and go to hell. I never drunk anymore. That was weeks for months before I got saved. <laughs> ain't no fun. See, ain't, you got to look over your shoulder all the time. It's more than praying. Then one night I went to start off that drum so low again that song bright lights was flashing everywhere. People screaming and hollering, throwing stuff, acting like dummies, dumb dummies do when they get drunk. Come on, and we weren't no drinking band. We didn't drink while we was on the stage. We was trying to go somewhere. Amen. And we were on management and we had a road manager and everything. Amen. And, and I kicked it off. The lights was blasting and, and the speakers was loud. Everything. Everything was going through the sound system. Smoke rising. You know everything going on. And we start, start off that drum solo. We start singing this song. And for the first time in my life, Pastor Ruby, I actually listened to the lyrics and I became ashamed. I thought, man, I am losing my mind. Look at your neighbor and say, have faith in God. That's what happens. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean up to your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. So I say, you've got to lose your mind to find faith in God. Look at your neighbor and say, trust God. You've got to get a little out there. <laughs> so if you've been thinking I'm a little out there, you're wrong. I'm a whole lot out there. <laughs> and when he comes, I'll be a whole lot further out there. I'll be gone. Sixteen and seventeen. I believe I'll just practice. Praise God. Thank you. I'm gonna pray. You keep praying, Pastor Mom. Yeah. One time I've been talking about this, all of us been sharing with me. Tell Pastor Ruby. 
Keep praying. Amen. I've got every one of them. Amen. If they will walk in me, if they will walk in the same power you've walked in all these years, they will. For the sin of the righteous shall be delivered. Proverbs 11 and 21. Acts 16, 31 says, People of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your house. Yes. Well, Paul Hogan's told me to tell you again, he's going to sin. And your grand seed, says the Lord. Your offspring will know me too. Sister Betty, she will know me again, says the Lord. Matter of fact, I'm dealing with her right now, says the Holy Ghost. She tries to forget me, but she can't, says the Lord. I got the 
verse 15 of Revelation 20, whosoever's name is not written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. I dropped that little Bible, fell to my knees, because the night before I tried, I was going to kill myself. It had been saved too long, I was about to kill myself. I heard the Holy Ghost speak. Didn't know it was him then. He said, Thou shalt not kill. He said, For no one that murders has eternal life about them. Years later, I found that in Exodus 20 and 1 John 3. I screamed out that night, Oh God, if I can't kill me and go to heaven, I don't want to miss heaven. You take my life. Found that in 1 Kings 19. Years later, when Elijah was sitting up under a juniper tree and wanted to die, he said, Lord, take my life. Timothy 3 verses 4. You go through harness. 
You'll go through tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, I'll overcome the world, John 16, 33. How did Jesus overcome the world? Some might say on the cross. The only way we gonna overcome the world, we've got to come to his cross, take it up and surrender our everything, give him our all. Come on, man. Preacher, when you go get through preaching, you said about 30 minutes ago you was ending. I'm still ending. I'm trying to end you so you can begin in him. Isaiah 38, 13. Isaiah said, Hallelujah, you brought me to the end of myself. Come on, somebody. You made an end of me. You're trying to preach us to death. You're right. I'm trying to kill you tonight. Sorry. Tell you something in church, you probably ain't used to give up. You give up, you'll feed with the Holy Ghost. There is no baptism in the Holy Ghost and fire with tongues. Come on, somebody, and the gifts of the Spirit and the supernatural manifestation power of God until you're willing to lay yourself down. That's why we don't see as much filled with the Holy Ghost as we did uh, even 10 or 15 years ago in the church. Because the modern church world, uh, amen, wants to see how close they can live to the world and see, still be entertained by it and, and still have the benefits of the cross. The cross is the place of dying and death. It's the message that's his. But the message that he is tells us we also have one to take up uh, and deny ourselves and follow him according to 9, Luke 9, 23. You want to see his glory? You have to lose yours. In Luke 9, 31, Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, his glory appeared. Moses stood there with him. And Elijah. Moses represents the saints who die in the Lord, and Elijah represents those who are alive and remain when he comes again in his glory. Peter and the other two woke up at the foot of the mountain sleeping. When they saw his glory, ooh, they got excited. They said, It's good that we bent should be here. And didn't even know what he was saying next, but he said, Let's make a tabernacle for Moses and one for Elijah and one for you. And all of a sudden, the cloud come over. Everything was hid. And when the cloud was gone, come on, somebody. Jesus was standing alone. And God said, this is my son. Hear ye him. Why? Because he will not share his glory. Amen. With nobody. But in verse 31, Luke 9, Pastor Ruby, the message Jesus discussed with Moses and Elijah was... I'm going to Jerusalem. Yes. And they're going to crucify me. Yes. Jesus was standing in his glory in Luke 9 29. When he prayed, his garments became white and glistering. The glory of God. He looked like he's going to look in heaven. Before he ever went to the cross. Yes. Pastor Ruby preached one message. I'm going to die on the cross. I'm going to surrender to the will of my Father and give him my heart. So I can receive the fruit of their, the reward of my sufferings, lost souls. I'm going to give everything. Until you get back to that cross and surrender to His Lordship, there will be no glory in the church. There will be no signs and wonders and miracles. Friend, this is it. You may think this is just a calm little dull service, man. He just kind of wandering up there. And he just ain't even covering a little bit of everything. No, I've been preaching all around that word Lord and or that name Lord and that word liberty. Come on, someone. I'm trying to show you by the Spirit of God. Friend, it's surrendering at the cross. Amen, glory to God, that brings his glory, that releases his power. Let your head be bowed along the mountain. Lord, show us the places where I'm surrendered to your Lordship. Reveal the places right here now tonight that we, that I, have not relinquished our rights. For Lord, in Revelation 3, you said a church that was lukewarm was laid to sea. 
In Laodicea and Greek, Lord, I remember well studying it, means the people's rights for the people's rules. Lord, when we're ruling us and not you, when you're not Lord over us, and when we're living our rights, holding on to ours, instead of relinquishing them and giving them up to you, we become lukewarm. You told Moses, if you want to get any closer to me, take the shoes off that are on your feet because you're standing on holy ground. Exodus 3, 5. Lord, is there something we need to step out of so we can get closer? Is there something we need to walk away from? God, you said corrupt or bad communication is corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Lord, is it a relationship? There's someone you're dating you know they don't serve God and you know they don't want nothing to do with God. I just read where a preacher today married a rock star. If I call that preacher's name, she don't pass her far from here and make a church. You know us, don't we? Ain't but a third marriage and his fourth. First Corinthians six fourteen said, "Don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever." Now, if you've already yoked to him and said, "I do," you did. Now you sanctify the house as you serve God, and you got to wait on God. But you hear the words of this prophet, this preacher of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're dating somebody and you know they're not right with God, they don't want nothing to do with God. You better run as fast as you can away, because that is not God's will. Don't let your flesh deceive you. Show us, Holy Ghost. Show us, Holy Ghost. Show us, Holy Ghost. Shalom, Dred, Divesa, Dred, Divela, Kadara, Rumos. Hilida, Narva, Rumos, Slava, Narva, Sister Renee, will you look in one of those CD uh, albums on the computer uh, and say, Lord, I'm coming, is the name of the album. And you'll find a soundtrack on there that says, Lord, you have my heart. Yep. Will you do this? Lord, you have my heart. And I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Yeah, Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sacrifice. Cross is right here if you'll come. What's he want from it, brother Lord? He wants any and everything. Give up tonight. This ain't for just a sinner or a backslide. This is for saints. Paul said he had to do this day in 1 Corinthians 15, 31. He said, I'm dying daily.
Yes, Lord, I'm singing. You're 